Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Global Report. As with Asian Review that was previously hosting, this show is about having guest experts on to share their perspective on global developments. This afternoon, we have with us um, Ambassador Nu Nura Nura Sojaya. <laughs> He's the Ambassador of Indonesia to Singapore. Welcome to the show, Ambassador Sojaya. Thank Sojaya. you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Now, Mr. Ambassador, um, 2017 was a momentous year mm -hmm. for Indonesia. Among other things, um, it, it marked the 50th anniversary between Singapore and Indonesia and also marked the 50th anniversary of ASEAN, right. of which uh, Indonesia was a founding member. Yes. Um, why don't we start off by talking about ASEAN? Would you mind giving us a little background on ASEAN, how, yeah. how it came about? Well, uh, first, of course, I think you know, when ASEAN was uh, first uh, founded, uh, there were a lot of uh, skepticism and there were a lot of uh, criticism toward ASEAN because, of course, you know, we have to also understand that ASEAN is uh, comprised of uh, countries at the beginning with different political as well as legal uh, backgrounds. So, uh, the pace of movement of ASEAN was of course, at the pace comfortable to all. And then uh, ASEAN is, you know, uh, growing, uh, becoming ASEAN 10. And of course, uh, the collaborations, uh, uh, cooperation in ASEAN was not only limited to issues that was really make everybody comfortable. Uh, so ASEAN started to talk about political security issues as well as evolving into a community where we also embrace a number of uh, internationally accepted uh, norms and values and that is when ASEAN was recognized to become a community. Now you talk about the differences mm. in political ideologies. Mm. Has that been the biggest obstacle towards? Um, well, this is this is the learning curve that uh, ASEAN has already been learning in the in the evolving uh, history of of uh, fifty years. So as I said at the beginning, uh, they are ready to uh, talk about uh, non really politically sensitive collaborations that they have started with. Uh, 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 cultural co co cooperations, economic cooperation. But when uh, ASEAN is evolving, of course, we also see the responsibility of the organization to really maintain peace and stability by entering into issues that was before considered as uh, sensitive. Uh, including, take for example, some issues pertaining to uh, transnational crimes, although the legal system is different from one country to another. But of course, we are here to bridge those gaps in order to really uh, address and, and collaborate more effectively among uh, countries in the region. What about issues that are more um, debatable, more uh, um, controversial, such mm. as the South China Sea, because mm. we have Cambodia and Laos that are, have close ties to China mm. and would rather such dispute to be kept out of multilateral yes, forum. Yes. And we have Malaysia, Philippines and Vietnam mm. that are claimants in the dispute. How does ASEAN deal with that? Look, uh, you know, I was about to tell you that in the evolving history of ASEAN, of course, we do not live in a vacuum. We live in a very dynamic, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical uh, at the region as well as at the global level. And ASEAN certainly will be affected by whatever the dynamic that we are going to see in the region. I mean, take for example, uh, of course, each of the ASEAN member states have their own unresolved territorial, uh, you know, uh, uh, negotiations. Uh, there are still disputes among some of the ASEAN member states. But the most important thing is that, uh, uh, you know, we agree that all of those disputes, all of those uh, 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 potential uh, disputes that we have, we agree that those should be resolved in a peaceful manner through negotiation and dialogue. And that is very important, you know. It does not necessarily mean that when we agree on that principles, then over the period of five years, we will be able to settle that. 
but uh, look at you know uh, the situations that we have before uh, uh, between uh, Thailand and Cambodia. It was because of ASEAN. Then finally, uh, both countries are ready to sit down. Uh, although it was brought to the UN before. Are you referring to the temple? The, the, the temple, the yeah. Temple, the, the, yeah. The, 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 the dispute between uh, territorial dispute between the temple uh, between uh, Cambodia and Thailand. So it was brought to the UN and the UN was referred back to ASEAN because look, you have your own mechanism. Hmm. Why don't you settle it there? You know, hmm. Don't bring it to the UN agenda. Uh, when you are able to settle it, then you, know, you better settle it among yourself. Hmm. So that was, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some of the examples that we have already been uh, experiencing in the evolving uh, history of ASEAN. Now, coming to the South China Sea, I think this, again, as I mentioned, that each of the ASEAN member states still have their unresolved uh, territorial negotiations. Uh, of course, the territorial dispute, territorial claims is still there. And the situation is becoming uh, a bit, uh, you know, not a bit, uh, becoming very complicated because we are not talking about a dispute between two countries. It's an overlapping claims. If, if you agree between the two parties, it may not also satisfy the third parties and the fourth parties and so on and so forth. So we anticipated that back in 2002, then we agreed to sit down with China, ASEAN and China, then we came up with this Declaration of the Conduct, which eventually it will evolve into the Code of Conduct. That now we are, uh, we see the process is moving forward, despite the, the difficulties for us to really uh, make this uh, to move uh, very uh, quickly. Because again, you know, we live not in a FACU, we live in a dynamic world. So uh, then, you know, we see now the shift where China becoming number two economy in the world. You know? and, and of course, they, they would like to play a significant role in the region. And when we could not uh, develop a, a conducive environment in the region uh, to resolve the issue of the South China Sea, in a peaceful manner. So then we will, you know, end up into, you know, a tit for tat in terms of uh, statement and so on and so forth. So now, uh, yes, this is a challenge for ASEAN. Uh, that was the reason why I think from the beginning ASEAN has already been making it very clear. The most important thing for ASEAN is ASEAN unity and ASEAN centrality. Now you mentioned the notions of unity and centrality. Mm. Um, I re recall that uh, when President Duterte mm. came into power, he very boldly announced uh, Manila's departure, separation from their long-term ally, mm. and realigned their ideological flow with China. How did that affect us, ASEAN when you have one of your members taking you know, quite a big departure from from the Well, that flow. is a matter of uh, uh, each of the ASEAN member states' uh, foreign policy. You know, uh, we are not, ASEAN is not dictating the foreign policy of each of the ASEAN member states. But uh, I think uh, our departure point is that we have a common principles. We have a common uh, objective and goals that we are going to reach. And uh, it will not prevent each of the ASEAN member states to take their own foreign policy I mean, in a different way so, so long as this is not contrary to the you know, goals, objective as well as the principles in ASEAN. So long as this is not contrary to that, I think you know, each of the ASEAN member states can pursue their own uh, foreign policy ways to serve their own uh, national interests. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned foreign policy um, with President uh, Jokowi. Um, there seems to be a rather broad uh, perception that mm. he has a lack of interest in foreign policy. Yeah. Um, look, at, I... look at what is happening now. <laughs> look at what is happening now. I mean, you know, people then finally realize that they uh, misunderstood the president. They uh, did not understand very well, you know, uh, I mean, the, the, the commitment of the president, you know, he is the only president that is visiting, uh, I think, uh, the second president, if I'm mistaken, if not the only Indonesian president visiting Afghanistan. 
uh, in trying to help, you know, uh, promoting peace and stability, uh, reconciliations in, in, in Afghanistan. And, you know, uh, last month he made a trip to, while he's attending the ASEAN India Commemorative Summit, he made a trip to uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh to see the Rohingya, uh, you know, in Kokbasar and went to Pakistan as well as uh, Afghanistan. You know, he, he, he did that also because uh, he's still also holding a championship of IORA, the uh, Indian Ocean uh, Rim Associations. So uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, international commitments that Indonesia is continue to pursue, including also our candidature to the non permanent seat of the U and UN Security Councils. This again, you know, if the president is lack of ambition in terms of playing an active role in the, in the, in the international, uh, in, in, in diplomacy, why we, you know, putting our candidature in the UN Security Council. So I think this is, you know, this is very much consistent with the, uh, the constitutions that we have. It was mandated by the constitutions that the administration uh, role should be, you know, uh, active in trying to pursue uh, peace uh, and, uh, you know, stability, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in the world. Mm. So he, he really um, presented with results that it's not that he's, he exactly. suffered no lack in, yeah. in foreign policy, but he seems to be putting his focus on um, bilateral relations with mm. different countries. Look, you know, uh, what is he trying, what he's trying to do is that, of course, first, uh, he saw that in order to make the Indonesian economy competitive, we are still lacking in terms of the infrastructure. So that was the reason why he was really nailing at what are the priorities to make Indonesian economy competitive. You know, without uh, Indonesian economy competitive, then Indonesia will not also be able to play an effective role in the context of the ASEAN community. Without Indonesian economy, you know, becoming competitive, so we will not also be able to, uh, you know, promote the uh, high economic growth in the region. Look, Indonesian uh, are comprising of almost half of the ASEAN populations. So that is exactly the difference, perhaps, you know, he was really addressing the issue of infrastructure development. And we see, you know, over the past three years of his presidency, the uh, ease of doing business in Indonesia, for example, just take one indicator, uh, improve, uh, jump from, uh, it was uh, rank uh, 109 two years ago, now rank 72. It was a significant improvement. Uh, in addition to that, all of the international rating agencies gave Indonesia investment grade. And, you know, uh, this is not happening just like that. You know, this is happening because of the efforts uh, put by the administrations, put by the president and his team. And this really, you know, uh, bringing uh, an energy to to ASEAN, you know, to even grow further. This morning I was at the ASEAN EU Business Summit. And I think everybody is, you know, both from EU and ASEAN, they are talking about a brighter future that we see, you know, uh, ahead of us. But it does not necessarily mean without any challenges. What do you think are the chances of uh, Indonesia securing a seat at the UN Security Council? We are working very hard, you know, uh, as you know that we are contributors of uh, almost 5,000 uh, peacekeeping forces all over the world in the conflict areas. And you were the, the first. The you were also the first country that went in that was allowed into the Rakhine State when. Yeah, well, you know, we of course uh, we send humanitarian assistance. We are trying to ease the suffering of the people. There are some criticism toward ASEAN in saying that, you know, what ASEAN is doing, you know, uh, after what is happening. Uh, you know, uh, they simply uh, uh, do not see that, I think, immediately after that, the foreign ministers have a meeting and then, of course, they were briefed by the, uh, the, the, the Myanmar government on the situations and then they agree uh, on some of the principles, uh, such as, you know, cessation of hostility, you know, ease the suffering of the uh, refugees and, and, and providing 
humanitarian assistance as well as uh, you know in helping how to prof uh, find uh, lasting solutions on, on, on these issues. So uh, it is wrong if we say that ASEAN is not doing anything on that. Mm -hmm. Well, especially Indonesia is, 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 is you know, playing a very uh, active role in this regard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. We're going to take a little break here, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about the diplomatic relations between Singapore and Indonesia. Sure. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to The Global Report. I'm your host, Lily Ong. We have with us today Mr. Ambassador Sojaya. He's the Indonesian Ambassador to Singapore. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Ambassador, uh, I know that last year also marked the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. um, of the formal diplomatic relations between Singapore and Indonesia. That's right. um, from the beginning back to 1967, things were, we had a rocky start, didn't we? Well, you know, uh, as you know that, uh, you know, they also, I mean, Singapore also have a situation with Malaysia, you know. Mm -hmm. The confrontasi. Uh, yeah, the yeah. confrontasi also was there, and I think uh, the you know the the uh, the region was was dominated by uh, conflicts, or people call it as a proxy war mm -hmm. at that time, and uh, some countries newly independent, you know, colonization was becoming, uh, you know. Uh, you know, eliminated. So, as 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 a young uh, country, of course, we face uh, uh, a lot of uh, challenges uh, to move forward. So, uh, bilateral relations between Indonesia and Singapore has already been, you know, continue uh, growing. So, uh, last year celebration, we we used that in order to first, you know, uh, learn from the lessons that we have over the past fifty years. Uh, number two, we also, you know, uh, see the, the continuing progress despite the fact that we are still having some challenges as neighbors, as always like that, you know. Uh, but at the same time also the third, uh, you know, we, uh, we would like to seize the momentum that we have in order to uh, bring the partnership and collaboration between the two countries to the next to the next level. Now, did this establishment of uh, formal relations, did it occur a month? Was it before ASEAN or after ASEAN? I think it was a month after uh, the formation yeah, ASEAN of ASEAN. ASEAN was uh, 8th of uh, August uh, and uh, bilateral relation was uh, 7th of September. 7th of September. So, uh, a month after ASEAN mm -hmm. established, yeah. Do you think ASEAN was instrumental in, in prompting both countries of to course, come together? Yeah, 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 I think so. You know, I know because I think this is a brilliant idea of uh, the, 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 the founding uh, countries of ASEAN and the brilliant ideas of the foreign ministers who uh, gathered in Bangkok at the time because they, you know, they, they see what has already been happening in the region and they would like to prevent that from happening how to prevent that from the ha from happening so then you know they establish ASEAN. But even the things that the member states commit to doing now, those are voluntary or are there any ramifications if they don't follow through? Look, you know, uh, at the beginning it was only uh, five uh, member states uh, involved in the establishment of ASEAN, of ASEAN. We know that some countries are still facing some problems also. But uh, I think the inspirations at the time is also is, is certainly to include all of those, you know, include into the geographical term of Southeast Asia. So we are talking about uh, Laos, uh, Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, and even you know the the membership of of the process of membership of new uh, ASEAN member state was not 
also uh, uh, smooth sailing. You know, there are some uh, turbulences here and there. But then finally, we we agree that you know we uh, include all of the ASEAN Southeast Asian countries. Now the last, I mean, the Timor Leste, take for example, has already uh, presenting their official can uh, you know. Uh, uh, applying, officially applying to become a member of ASEAN. Mm. Now ASEAN, if you are talking about ASEAN, of course, some countries are even thinking, I mean, this is not this is not a joke, but this is the fact that, you know, I was told by our colleague, the Norway ambassador to, to ASEAN, uh, there was a debate in their parliament, so I don't know, we also joined ASEAN. Mm. <laughs> Papua New Guinea is also making it, you know, uh, uh, clear that they would like to also apply a membership in ASEAN. Oh, that's wonderful. It's fabulous. Now, going back um, 50 years, looking at the history between uh, Singapore and Indonesia, mm -hmm. the relationship, what were some of the more significant uh, challenges that came along the way? 50 years was a long time for any relationship. Mm -hmm. What were some of the uh, more significant challenges and how did Singapore and Indonesia work together to overcome them? Well, you know, there are, uh, there are a number of, uh, you know, uh, issues uh, raised between Indonesia and ASEAN that was, you know, uh, affecting the bilateral relations in the past. But I think the most important thing is that at the beginning, we have a very good personal relations between the leaders of the two countries. Mm -hmm. This helped a lot. And you're referring to um, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew and, and President Suharto. And, and, and yeah, President Sukarno and mm -hmm. President Suharto. Mm -hmm. uh, so this really helps a lot. And, and I think uh, after 50 years, we think that we need also to involve more and more people-to-people -people, uh, dialogue and interactions. We should not take each other for granted, you know, because uh, because we are neighbors, and then you know uh, we don't need to learn uh, from each other. I think this is the lessons that we also learned in the past 50 years. Now, when President uh, Suharto departed, was there a big hiccup? Because now we yeah, couldn't re depend well, on the personal course, rapport. Yeah, of course that was uh, you know. Uh, uh, a major change, you know, uh, in Indonesia. We call it a uh, uh, you know, fundamental transformation in Indonesia. Uh, of course, people, uh, you know, have anxiety whether this is going to, where is this going to bring, uh, you know, Indonesia in the future, whether the relations that we already been developing, you know, a good, uh, you know, personal relations will remain, so this is going to uh, you know, change and so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is that uh, I think, you know, uh, despite the hiccup that we have, you know, in our transformation process, you see a consistency. I was asked whether the foreign policy remains, you know, remains, it, be, it was guided by the, the uh, Indonesian constitution in 1945. It remains as what, uh, as what it was when Indonesia was first proclaimed uh, its independence. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it remains, uh, you know, there, uh, active and, and, and you know, uh, free and active foreign policy remains also uh, very much in the pursuit of the Indonesian uh, foreign policy. So, well, you know, uh, there were some uh, worried at the beginning, but then they see that, you know, we are moving toward, you know, uh, uh, the right directions. I re recall in uh, 2013, um, there was that transboundary haze that mm -hmm. caused a little bit of tension between Singapore and Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how did the two countries, you know, resolve that or, or overcome that, mm. that tension that arose? Look, you know, when we are talking about forest fire, <laughs> uh, you may want to see one of the very famous painting collections made by a very famous Indonesian artist, which is very famous in Europe. Raden Saleh. Now it's still in the National Gallery, uh, the collections of uh, Indonesian painters Raden Saleh. One of the painting, which is, I think, uh, you know, the home of this painting is in the National Gallery here. Uh, it was dated 1885, and the title of the painting is Forest Fire. So, I mean, Forest Fire is not only happening just now. I mean, only recently. It has already been, uh, you know, a natural phenomenon. But of course, it was perhaps made worse with this 
expansion of plantation, which is not sustainable and so on and so forth. So uh, we, you know, acknowledge that this is an, a very important issue that we are all committed to address. When we have haze, the most people affected the most was Indonesians, mm. those who live around the forest, the cities located not so far away from the forest. I cannot imagine how they live their life, mm. you know, uh, during uh, haze. Uh, but then, of course, they are, you know, we are we are we are putting a lot of efforts. Uh, we are trying to address not only to put out the fire, but also to uh, do some prevention uh, measures. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's happened in the past two years. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, uh, Singapore erected the Transboundary Haze yeah. Act, uh, essentially making it a criminal act for any conduct mm -hmm. that caused, mm -hmm. you know, haze in Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, it's, regardless, I mean, the, the law was targeted at companies, not the country, but did Indonesia take it personal? But no, I mean, you know, uh, our stand, our official stand is this is the uh, right and obligation of our, every country to develop their own mm. law. But also we, uh, we have a stand that, you know, every country should also protect their own citizens, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, so long as this is conducted within, you know, uh, the, 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 the sphere of the, you know, uh, of uh, each of the you know countries, I think we can also enact it. What kind of law that we we mm -hmm. want to enact? And, and and the only problem is the transnational uh, nature of that law. You know whether this is going to be applicable is a different question. Again, it's a different situation. You know whether this is going to be very effective. And there's there's also uh, you know a, a different issues uh, altogether. Uh, whether this is going to be effective in order to prevent, you know, uh, such an, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, such an issue. But the most important thing, I think, we believe that we are ready to collaborate with the international community, and I think it has already been shown in the past two years. The and maybe the, the rest of the countries in the region should be reminded that those days when there are no forest fires, Indonesia provide a lot of fresh air to the region well, from the trees, right? I mean, you know, I'm not saying that. You're saying <laughs> I'm that. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reminding Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we don't want to just talk about problems. We want to talk about you know, some of the accomplishments and even a celebration. Last year was the 50th anniversary. Yeah. What were some of the commemorative events that took place? Where? Uh, what, what were some of oh, the, I know there was a book launch and stamps. Oh, many, you know, uh, I think we, at embassy, uh, our embassy here, I think we organized or involved, uh, there might be two or three events every month during one year. In the year that's leading up to the yeah, actual last date? Year. Okay. Uh, starting from January. Mm -hmm. You know, starting from January, we kick off the events by organizing a business forum and then of course officially kicked off by the meeting of the two foreign ministers uh, and then there are some cultural events, book launching, you know, even the last uh, in December we organized this, you know, you were participated in that, uh, the fun run. Yes. I think this is also one way for us to bring uh, Singaporeans and Indonesians to do good things together, which is very healthy, mm -hmm. and where they can also interact with each other. With, with, I mean, this is really a very good opportunity for people to interact with each, with each other. But uh, the most significant event, of course, the 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 the, the peak of the event was the, the retreat between the two leaders and uh, the the fly pass. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the sky of Singapore as well as Indonesia. It was really, you know, uh, 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 spectacular events uh, witnessed by the, the leaders of the two countries and the people of the two countries. And I think this, you know, symbolizing a lot of things, uh, the closeness, the, 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 uh, the commitments, you know. And there was even a, a tree planting. Yeah. yeah, and you can still, if you go to the <laughs> botanical garden, you will see a uh, rising tree. What kind of tree? Uh, it's an oak tree. Oak tree, okay. An oak tree, yeah. It's a rising tree, 
you know, rising mm -hmm. is uh, Republic of Indonesia and Singapore. Mm -hmm. So there's a tagline. Now, who came up with that? Was it Singapore side or Indonesia side? No, we both came up with that idea. You know, mm -hmm. when, when we are uh, preparing for this uh, uh, commemorations and we are thinking of what is what should be the tagline. You know, mm -hmm. then we, I mean, our I have to give credit to our junior colleagues. You know, they are of course they consulted me and then they came up with how how we can do this and then then. All of a sudden, rising is rising mm. fifty. It's it 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 was very wonderful, and mm. and I think we agree also that we are still going to use the rising tagline, you know, but without fifty because it's fifty one mm. already now. So we are going to organize a fashion show. We call it Rising Fashion. Uh -huh. <laughs> there will be a project. We call it Rising Project. Mm -hmm. It's a Republic of Indonesia and Singapore project. Right. So rising, so many things, you know, mm. and I think this really the momentum that we created from the commemoration of the 50th anniversary. Mm. Well, that sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for um, sharing your perspectives with us today. My pleasure. Um, I want to say happy anniversary on both counts and congratulations on both counts. Thank you very thank much. You so thank much. you so much. Thank, thank you. you.